So let's say that you had an image like this and you wanted to select this. So, you know, we're not going to use the wand tool. Let's make sure we're on the right layer. Let's also make sure that when we're at the wand tool, we're at 32 as the standard. You'll notice that what I was doing before wasn't very effective. And let's switch this from the wand to the quick selection tool. And I'm going to hit Command D, start from scratch, just kind of go through. As you can see, I'm doing this very, very loosely. I'm just going to kind of go through, through here. I'm going to try to get roughly as good of a selection as I can with a full awareness. Going to hold Alt to just kind of delete from this selection. Um, and then I'm going to decrease it with the square bracket key. Yeah, that's looking good. Then Alt again to delete from the selection um, with an awareness that whatever I do right here, it won't be it won't be perfect, but it will be pretty good. All right, this looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is rather than inverting the selection as we've done always in the past and hitting delete, I'm going to undo. I'm going to say refine edge. So let's refine edge right here and zoom in. And uh, here we go. Let's, uh, I don't know, let's uh, expand it a little bit. Let's add a little bit of contrast. Yeah, there we go. Everyone likes a little bit of contrast. We'll feather it a little bit. Um, I don't feel like smoothing it. Let's just look at original and let's look at it on black. Yeah, that's really unforgiving. You always want it as unforgiving as possible. So original versus this. Um, okay, so I'm adding a little bit too much contrast here. Well, a lot too much contrast here. I'm expanding it out too much. I'm feathering it just a wee bit too much. All right, so just a little bit difference right there. I'm going to say OK. And then rather than deleting it, I'm going to apply a layer mask. Layer mask applied. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a really unforgiving background color in the background. So here we go. So now I get a really good sense of what is and what isn't working. And now I'm going to go through with my brush tool. So hit B for brush. And you know, I'm not going to even pay attention to what's black, what's white or anything. I figure that here, let's say that it had started as white. If I accidentally started it like that, I could always hit Command Z. I very rarely I very, very rarely am looking at the uh, layer palette to be like, am I painting in black? Am I painting in white? Um, because like the moment you start doing that, it kind of feels a little bit technical and you need to be going from here to here. And I don't know, it's, it's uncomfortable. Wh what I'll do is I'll just set it to default colors. So hit this button or just hit D to do the default colors of black and white. And then like if I accidentally go in the wrong direction, which happens all the time, I'll just do Command Z to undo and then just hit X and I'll go in the other direction. I mean, really, when using a layer mask, the uh, the big shortcut keys to uh, to keep in mind are the big shortcut keys to the brushes. Um, they're the square bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of the brush. They're the um, they're D to set the default thing to black and white, um, to set the default colors to black and white. Um, what other what other ones are there? X to switch between the foreground and the background color, and then it's just kind of playing with this and getting to a point where you're able to like just kind of paint it in. And you'll see I'm just going really particular. Um, but let's say there's a section like this one, and I can see that I kind of lost the uh, fish's scales. Um, so you can do something if you right click, you can say um, disable layer mask right here. And so I want to get these fishes scales back in. So I'm going to go into the quick select tool. You'll notice that what I'm going to do in order to achieve this, this isn't working. Quick select is always my first go-to. That's not working. Uh, then I'm going to go to the magnetic lasso tool. And I'm just going to hold uh, shift. Not really needed because it's just a habit to start with shift. Um, anyway, what, what, what I was saying is what's, what's really important here is, and this is where it really becomes powerful, delete to go back a step. Um, is it's a matter of how you start combining the tools together. So what I'm going to do here is rather than just using the brush tool directly onto the mask, first I'm going to select an active region. In this case, an active region of where the scales are. So that looks pretty good right there. Then I'm going to click the mask. And so now we're seeing the, ma the, the mask is active again. So disable mask, enable mask. And if you like just click the mask when it's disabled, it'll enable it again. All right, so now we have this all selected, or I should say this created as the active region. Now when I go to my brush, just B for my brush, I'm going to increase this in size a little bit. And I'm also going to hit, and this is optional, Command H to hide it. So you can always hit Command H to hide it. And I like doing that um, because it reveals things. Notice I went in the wrong direction. Not a big deal. 
hitting Command Z, then X. I just do that intuitively right now. Um, when I go in the right direction, I get a very good sense to get this perfect selection right here. So um, I'm going to hit Command H again because it's a little bit confusing if you're not seeing the active region. But no, you can always hit Command H just so you can see exactly what you're painting in. Now one thing that I'm seeing right here is this feels like a little bit of a sharp edge. Um, so here we go, Command H. This feels like a little bit of a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit my lasso tool and I'm going to select the inverse. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Refine Edge and feather it by one pixel. So just a single pixel. Then, you with me so far? You might need to rewatch this. Um, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my brush tool and I want to paint on. Now you'll notice I'm getting this X thing. Whenever you have a problem, the first place to look is at your at when you're at your ugh. whenever you have a problem, excuse me, um, the first place to look is what's going on with your layers. You'll notice I um, have a group right here, and right now it's selected on the group rather than the layered mask. The reason for that is when I had hit Command H, I accidentally hit Command G, which creates a group. Um, so it was just kind of a guffaw. I just moved to the right layer, and now I'm good again. I'm going to hit Command H once more. I'm going in the wrong direction, so Command Z. I'm going to hit X to go in the right direction and zoom in a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm accomplishing right here. And I'm just softening up this edge ever so much. And again, the way that I got to softening this edge, because I know that was quite a few steps right there, hitting X, the way that I got to softening that edge is I inverted the selection so the only thing that was in the active region was um, basically this surrounding area. And then I just went in with a brush. So the only part of the mask that it could affect, the only part that it could affect was this very, very edge-like thing. So feel free to watch that video again. I know that was a few steps. Um, let me do it for one more area to kind of reinforce that lesson in um, because it's kind of a, um, it's a multi-step technique, but it's one of the ways that uh, using a mask can be really, really powerful just to get that perfect, perfect not cut out selection. So right now I'm just kind of going through at a zoomed in level. This is pretty similar to what I did with the, uh, the statue um, where I just kind of went in and adjusted the um, lasso tool, but you can see how this is, well, A, a lot more fun, uh, just because you're seeing things change in real time. Again, remember I'm on the mask, not on the layer. Um, and B, it allows for a lot more combinations of techniques, which um, I'm all for. It's possible, especially if you watched this class just kind of straight through, this is too advanced and you should just stick with the lasso tool for now. But once you're feeling really good about the lasso tool, it's good to turn this on and off to be like, am I getting it right? Okay. Um, once you feel really, really good about the lasso tool and you feel like you've like hit the upper limit there, the mask is the next tool to take on. So I see that I've kind of cut off one of his fingers, which happens in the fish industry. And I'm going to use the same technique that I showed you before. Instead of just brushing it in directly, what I'm going to do is I am going to go around this fish. So going around the fish. Let me move to my mouse. You'll probably hear it clicking. I've just been using a laptop uh, and my uh, trackpad. Uh, I prefer when doing uh, when working with masks to use a Wacom tablet, but I have a sneaking suspicion a lot of you don't own one, so that would be cheating. So I'm not going to even get into that. Um, if you are using masks a bunch and you want to get to the next level, um, buying a Wacom tablet allows you to do uh, pressure sensitivity, and that makes it so brushing is so much easier. So I'm going to do exactly what I did before. And again, I'm going to go to my brush, and I'm going to brush in. It's going the wrong direction, and it's kind of small. So first I'm going to increase it in size, then I'm going to hit X, and now it's going in the right direction. Now one thing that's happening here, same thing that happened before, before is it has too hard of an edge. You see that? So first I'm going to fill it in and see Command H. It has too hard of an edge. It's just like a really hard edge. You can see that. Then I'm going to invert it. So in order to invert it, I go to one of the selection tools and just press Select Inverse. Um, and then um, let me show it to you inside of this. If you hit Alt, you can kind of do this right here. 
What I want to do is I want to paint black on so it has just a little bit of a black fade right here so it's less of a hard edge. If I were to paint right here, it's white. That doesn't do any good. Hit X. If I paint right here, that doesn't do any good because it's not inside of the active region so I can't paint there. So what I'm doing is I'm refining the edge. I'm giving it a one pixel feather or 1.2, whatever. That, that, that's good. And then painting with black, again, going to my brush, I'm just giving it a slight fade because now that there's a one pixel feather, it gives it a little bit of a fade. I hope that makes sense. Um, and now when I go back to it, so Command D to deselect, it has just a slight bit of a fade. And I mean, this is, we're talking, this is super subtle. It's the difference between, eh, let's see. Well, it's hard to tell because, uh, it, it just makes it better. I mean, it just gives it that slight fade right there. So that's a way to kind of go in right there. Anyway, let's finish this mask up. I know this is one of the uh, longer videos now. Um, and just kind of going to go in. Yay, that looks great. And uh, go in right here. This is looking great. And, you know, I might spend more time on this to like really get this like right there. But if it's a more forgiving background, like red, putting this on red just makes for a super unforgiving uh, background. We're not going to get into things like color spill or anything like that. I think that's that's just a little bit much. Um, this is looking pretty good. Like before, after looks pretty good to me. Obviously, you wouldn't have it on a red background. You'd probably put it on a background more like this. And then who's going to tell? And once you know what the final background is, then you can kind of solve those like final areas where it's like, this is way too white here. We can kind of tell that now. So I would just go in and I would probably start with my lasso tool. I might even use a magnetic lasso tool, but that might be tough because these um, these edges are so close to, e to each other. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go in, holding down space bar to use the hand tool. And then I could actually just feather this right here rather than using our two-step technique. Go to my brush tool, increase it in size. Command D. And I just fix that right there. Command D. And that's looking a little bit better. You know, I'd play around with it a little bit more, but I have to say before, after, before, after, pretty sexy. You could spend some more time um, going in, refining the mask over here. Um, like, you know, I can see different areas, but the big thing that I want to get across is you now understand how to paint in and out of this image to really get super advanced selections. And you know what? With that, let's skip to the conclusion of this course.